Hey, how's it going? My name is Dustin Hudson, and today I'll be showing you how to use an Illustrator vector in Element 3D to extrude a 3D object like you see in this example. So first, let's head over to Illustrator. Now here in my Illustrator project, I just have a simple logo set up. So I have a circle, some text in the middle, and a couple of guides. So the first thing you would do in your Illustrator project would be to right click on any text that you have and hit the Create Outlines button. That will convert your text to editable splines to be able to be used in After Effects. So one quick tip before we move on. If you go to Window, Pathfinder, a couple options will pop up here. And there's an option to Unite, Minus Front, Intersect, Exclude. And there's a couple ones down at the bottom. Sometimes using some of these options to combine your splines together will help out if your splines are messy or there's overlapping That'll help out in the extrusion process in a second. This is a pretty simple example, but you might want to mess around with those if you have a lot of splines going on. It'll help to simplify things. So we're going to select the circle, and then holding shift, we're going to select the text. And if we go to Edit, Copy, and then we're going to head on over to After Effects. And I just have this simple scene set up with a couple of lights and just the background. I'm going to go to Layer, New, Solid. And it doesn't matter what color it is. And then we're going to select it and go to Edit, Paste. And now you'll see that our vector has been pasted into our After Effects comp. So I'm just going to hide that for now. And we can turn that off. This, by the way, just hides the masks. If we go to Element and we go to Custom Layers. And we go to Custom Text and Masks. We can select layer path one and we can select our gray solid. And that is a solid that we just copied and pasted our vector onto. So just select that. And now we'll head on into the element scene setup interface. All you got to do is hit the extrude button and it should automatically set this up. Now, this was the issue I was talking about earlier. I'm actually glad this came up because. I was trying to get it to work earlier and I actually wasn't having issues. So I'll show you how to fix this issue. Now it's extruded, it's looking nice, but the inside of the circles aren't behaving correctly. So there's a couple ways to fix this. One is to go to tessellation under the extrusion model settings and we can hit the fix holes option. And that normally does a pretty good job. But another thing we can do before we move on is we can get out of here and we can go to Illustrator. And if we select our two objects again, and we hit the Exclude button, it'll combine them in a group so that when we select them and hit Edit, Copy, we go to After Effects, and we go to our gray solid. And I'm going to delete all these masks. And I'm just going to hold Shift, select the top one, select the bottom one, and I'm just going to hit the Delete key. Now I'm going to select the gray solid and just hit edit, paste. Now this should look pretty much almost exactly the same, except for now when we go to element, it should already be set up right there, it's the same layer. If we go and turn off the fix hole switch, they should be already fixed, they should be good to go now. Now as you can see the edges are looking a bit low poly. If we go to path resolution, we can change that to ultra or extreme. And you can see what it's doing if you go to wireframe. And if you just cycle through these again, ultra, there's a few more polys, extreme, there's a lot more polys. And that's basically it. It's pretty simple. So if you click on the material options, you can now play with your extrude settings and bevel settings. You can change the extrude, and then you can play with the bevel size and just get it to look how you like. And that's pretty much all there is to it. You can play with the bevel curve to make the bevel look a little more sharp. If you want it more rounded, you turn up the curve. If you want it a little more jagged looking, you can turn it down. If you ever come across an issue where it seems like the edges are overlapping, what you can do is you can go to the expand edges and it'll shrink the extrusion back so that there's more room for it to bevel. But this object doesn't really have the issue because it's pretty simple. So if we head back to our comp, you can see that it is ready to go and be animated. Now in my other example, you can see that there's a bit of a spec map on the model. All you need to do is just go to the scene settings. 
I got this from the Pro Shaders pack. And you can just take the spec map and you can hit copy and then paste it right into the slot and just play with the specular settings and get it to look how you want. You can turn it up or down, change the radius, and then just get it to how you want it to look and you're good to go. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for tutorials, let me know in the comments. And thanks for watching. See you next time.